Hey guys, we're doing a custom flow video today. So this first brow we're working on, um, we're actually going to be build, building below the brow. And the other brow we're going to be building above the brow. Um, I'm also using a nano blade today. Uh, this is a 0.16 millimeter blade, super tiny. So what I'm beginning, um, what I'm doing in right now is actually just tracing over where hairs already are. Um, so I'm just following in this center area. Um, I'm just tracing exactly how her natural hair is already flowing in some nice V patterns until we get to the strokes that are flowing sideways. So I'm basically just completing my zone one. Um, if you have to make up that area, I like to usually draw the stroke flowing sideways and then go back and make it up. But um, it's pretty easy just to jump right in if you've got a good amount of natural hair like this. So what I'm doing it now is just kind of continuing on. And as you see, basically exactly how her hair is flowing, I'm just throwing in these, these nice little strokes that are really thin. Um, and they just flow with her natural hair. Sorry, this was a very chatty client, so I had to voice this over <laughs> because her talking was a little distracting. So if it looks like she's chewing gum, I have people tell me that sometimes she's not. It's her talking. <laughs> okay, so I'm now to the area where the hair is flowing sideways. And her entire brow, this entire brow is flowing sideways. Very few of her strokes um, are flowing downward. It's more at a sideways pattern. And so that's another reason I want to show you her as a model. So if you if you really create some upward strokes or downward strokes in her brow, you're going to get the hashtag going on. So with super side flowing brows, I tend to start um, with the edges and then kind of work into the center. And this is not, as you know, how I normally handle brows. Um, I like to define my center and then, um, and then fill in the top and fill in the bottom. But when they're really, really side flowing, I find that making sure that those edge strokes are really um, moving sideways, it actually is easier to do those first and then fill the, your center. So as you see exactly how her hair is flowing, all I'm doing is short little strokes um, in V patterns. So I'm not reinventing the wheel here at all. And I'm, I'm filling in where her hair naturally is and then once I get to the area that it isn't then then we'll have to go ahead and make up a pattern so so her hair is continuing to flow sideways so I'm basically starting where her hair is naturally flowing right here and then I'm just continuing on like that hair was if those hairs were to grow longer so I'm just gonna drag that out And so again, here's this stroke. So I'm just going to pretend that this hair got longer. So there we go. So now what I'm left with is kind of some V's and W's on this edge. So I'm just going to um, kind of feather in some strokes to fill this area using V's and W's. This is really the only area I have to make up, guys. Everything else, I was literally just following her hair. So I'm going to do one, create a V, now go in and make my Y. And then I'm going to make another Y off of that. And one more just little blender stroke and a blender there. And then on second pass, I'll look and see. I'm sure there's going to be a few more blenders. I'm also seeing kind of a white patch here, so I'm just going to put in a nice curvy stroke. Just like that. There we go. So if you can see, this is flowing seamlessly with her natural hair. 
And basically this entire brow is flowing sideways. There's again, the only upward strokes are in the very center um, and nothing's even really flowing downward. Everything's flowing sideways. Um, and that's a, this, you will run into this pattern sometimes. And so it's good to practice that out on latex. And the key is just doing really short, um, really short strokes and just working them into these. Okay, so with this center, she doesn't have natural hair. So I am having to kind of make up. So see this entire area is blank. So instead of starting where the hair is flowing um, and then continuing on, I'm working backwards. So I'm kind of looking at how the hair is flowing and I'm building it previous, uh, you know, earlier before the hair starts. So this is kind of the flow. So if, if you look and see how her hair is kind of flowing up and then over, we do have some upward strokes in this beginning area on this brow. So I'm connecting my stroke and then curving it to where it matches how the hair is flowing. And as you see, I'm having to get a really good stretch on her, having to push her brow um, pretty far into the center of her face and up onto that brow bone. There we go. So, um, and now I've got two parallel lines. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go back and break that up with some V's and some Y's. But first, I'm just gonna continue and build underneath this brow. And as you saw, we are building below the other brow, and now we're building on top of this brow. And see, if you do these little short strokes, it's really easy to do little blender strokes to fill the space. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and space these out a little bit and then go back in and fill. There we go. And there's a Y right there. And then I'm going to have that just flow into where her natural hair is going. And another one. And another one. But literally all I'm doing is making my strokes flow into where her hair is flowing. So I isolate a hair that I'm trying to follow. So kind of you see this kind of darker one here. So I'm going to follow that hair and then continue it on. And here's another one. So I'm just going to follow that hair. And again, when, um, when I have super side flowing brows, then I do do the edges and then build inward. So there's a hair and I'm going to make it go longer. And then this area, obviously there's no hair, but I'm just kind of, this is where I do have to kind of make up a pattern to fill where if she did have hair, how I think it would flow. So again, now I isolate a hair and how it's flowing. And here's another hair and how it's flowing. And another. So isn't this funny? Like you would think that this would be difficult, but honestly, somebody with pretty dense brows like this, you, you're basically just drawing lines over lines. And uh, just when you're really following their natural flow, then once you get to this area, that's where artistry comes in a little bit more and um, and you, you just want to follow their flow pattern in, again, building with, I know I'm seeing this a lot, but Y's and V's. There we go. And just always maintaining a really good stretch. And see, I'm really having to push and pull her brow over to the center. And I've got some parallel lines here, so I'm going to go ahead and start v a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to look at this brow. I'm sure we're going to need some little blender strokes. I'll just do one kind of here. And also see a little gap right in here. There we go. It's really nice too because with the, the brow lock and everything, you can just really see that white skin of where you need to fill. And if, if, if you can get basically all that coverage in this first pass, then um, 
then you your shape just turns out super killer. I mean, why spend a really long time on a um, on an outline if you're not gonna fill the space enough to make sure that you really maintain that outline? <laughs> so, so just a quick scan on this brow. As you see, literally, it's just flowing exactly how her natural brow is. Okay, so I'm just removing. And looking for how much lymph is there too. If somebody has a lot of lymph after one pass, then I only do two passes, even if they don't get a lot of, a lot of ink. And I'm having to stretch and pull her skin so much that honestly the brow lock isn't doing so killer after through this first pass. Part of it too is that I left her numbing on just a little bit longer and it kind of starts to break down the latex. Okay, but look at how much color we got on her skin. I'm actually really happy with this, so I can really easily see my strokes. Hopefully you guys can too. I'm adding one little blender in there. And other than that, I'm just softly tapping more pigment into our strokes. Just every once in a while, adding in a little extra one. I am elongating this one. I think it needed to come just a little bit lower. And sometimes the strokes blend so well with their hair that you almost need to, I like to use my thumb to kind of pull the hair sideways so that it creates that hashtag because when that happens, then you can actually see your stroke a little bit better. I can actually see these really well. Hopefully you can too. And this is with such a light pressure um, that I, I rarely have um, on, on this type of skin, just this really nice, healthy skin. Um, I rarely have additional bleeding or anything like this that um, or a lot of excess lymph on this second pass. You were just super, super lightly just tapping in more pigment to each stroke. And sometimes you see I'll kind of start and one, two, three, and then drag. And that's just, um, that's just about making sure that I'm getting that correct depth. And by going over a second time, by the way, all this is, is just making sure that each stroke is really saturated with pigment. Um, we're just trying to heighten the opacity of our colors um, because as of course as we know as they heal they lighten so we're just trying to pack in a little extra pigment to be honest I usually like how brows look better after one pass um, but of course in order I tell people usually how the brows look at one pass is how they're gonna heal so for example she with one pass maintained a lot of pigment so she's probably going to heal with a lot of a lot of pigment so um, but that's where if you, if after one pass there's not much there, those are the people I sometimes end up doing three. Okay, so um, through this these areas, I'm really just tracing my strokes. I'm not really adding anything. I'm actually really thrilled with the with the pattern that we created just in that quick, easy first pass. There's one little blender guy that I'm going to add in between these two. I love having my latex on here in between because it helps with my stretching too. It just gets a good grip on my gloves. Just really short, soft, sweet strokes through here. One little blender guy here. And I'm just going to fill in this little guy here. I think this brow is done. I seriously love, love people with kind of full brows like this that are just light. Um, they're my easiest client. I'm, I usually get these people in and out in an hour. <laughs> uh, um, well, I shouldn't say that. With numbing, maybe an hour and 15. But... Um, I bet you anything her actual microblading is going to be about 20 minutes and her mapping 
um, took me about 10. Look at how much pigment we have on this side too, guys. And look at how well this is flowing with her hair. Even though the hair is lighter, it, the flow is matching her natural hair so well that it's just blending so well. I'm super happy. So we're just going to do the same thing. Just fill this pigment in. And I'm just checking, moving the hair to make sure that there's no little blender strokes I want to add or no little problem areas. But it's actually looking fabulous. I'm just starting filling these guys in. And even though um, they are flowing the same direction as her hair, I can see these strokes, mainly because where these strokes are starting, there's no natural hair, so it's easy to see where I need to go. And I'm really paying close attention to starting them uh, at the exact same point on this bottom to get a nice clean line in the center of that brow, beginning of that brow. And I'm going to add one more kind of blender here. I know this is awful, but it drives me crazy when clients talk the whole time <laughs> and have their eyes open. It's like, okay, just shut your eyes and let me do my thing. <laughs> but that's okay. It was cute because I was kind of talking, explaining what I was doing, and she kept asking me questions. Well, why do you do that? And is this weird? And what about this? And she was wanting to know about the whole process. I was like, mm -hmm. I am considering having my telling my models like, okay, but you can't talk during the video. <laughs> am I allowed to say that? I could say that, right? Okay, so these guys are a little light. So I'm putting a little more pressure here, but I'm also going to add, add some blender strokes. Now, this is an area that I would typically add either some in-between soft blender strokes or some shading simply because underneath the brow, uh, it needs to be a little bit more defined than that top edge. You can build above a brow and pretty easily um, have those heel a little bit softer and it's still going to blend well, but underneath... Um, if you, if you just do some kind of soft strokes in between like this, where they're closer than you would normally do strokes, but you don't fill those strokes, they end up healing as kind of some soft textured shading. So just those little soft baby blenders I was putting in between the lines I already created there, that's just going to heal as some little shading underneath there, give us some fullness. Uh, and through this side area, I'm really happy with where all these strokes are at. So I'm just doing my little soft kind of one, two, three, pull, one, two, three, pull technique just to fill my pigment. And sometimes I'll use my blade to push the hair left or right to be able to get to my strokes. All right, and that's my last one. So let's just kind of look at this brow and see if we need any little blender, guys. And that's it. Her brows are finished. Thanks for watching. And just, uh, you know, go to the Facebook group and comment if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.